Mr. Khan, uh, you recently acquired Michael Beasley. Can you talk about his fit with the team? He's a very young and immature kid who smoked too much marijuana in Miami and has told me that he's not smoking anymore and I told him that I would trust him as long as that was the case. Uh, okay. If you ask me, one of the worst general managers in NBA history has to be David Kahn, who ran the Timberwolves into the ground between 2009 and 2013. While a fan's cheers usually go to the team's star player, casual fans often underestimate the GM's importance to winning a championship. You see, the NBA and sports is incredibly exclusive at the professional level. There are only around 450 players, so you gotta be one of the best of the best to earn that sweet $1 million minimum salary for a guaranteed contract. For GMs though, there are just 30 open positions, one for each team, making anywhere between five to $10 million per season. Millions of dollars in medical, scouting, analytical, and straight up marketing goes into whether a team should keep a specific player. But again, GMs just have to convince one role that they're right for the gig and that's the owner. Here lies why bad GMs can, and do, screw up their teams for years and sometimes even decades. But you may wonder, how can such an exclusive position mess up so much? Well, it's usually a combination of bad luck and bad timing. I believe that most GMs are not dumb. David Kahn, with his bachelor's and law degrees, is obviously not an idiot. Before his time as GM of the Wolves, he actually worked with the Indiana Pacers during their winningest time in their franchise, from 1995 to 2004, which actually included a trip to the NBA Finals in 2000. So here's the first mistake that Wolves owner Glenn Taylor made by bringing Khan on as GM. Remember when I said Khan worked with the Pacers when they were winning? Well, he was mostly in a business role. Now don't get me wrong, business is the bottom line and very important to an owner who paid millions to get where he is and must be living paycheck to paycheck. But winning has and will be the best money maker for teams not in New York or LA. Just look at the San Antonio Spurs versus the Denver Nuggets. Similar sized markets but vastly different revenues until recently because San Antonio is amongst the winningest teams in all of professional sports. But pretend you're Glenn Taylor and you don't know any of this. Now consider Khan, who made the Pacers profitable, and well, considering the current economic climate, it makes sense how he could have been hired by a small market team looking to make more money. So did any of this work? Uh... Taking over from Kevin McHale, who honestly deserves his own video, David Khan came out swinging in his first summer. And ironically, his best move, he traded away promising scorer Randy Foy and veteran sharpshooter Mike Miller to the Wizards for the fifth pick in the upcoming NBA draft, along with two players to match the salaries. Look at this! Five picks in the upcoming draft for a team last season that did... lackluster is really good. Alright Mr. Khan, who among these amazing prospects will you pick to cement your legacy as a GM with? But hey. He couldn't see the future, so if he hit on even a couple of these picks, it would be such a good start when your best player is Al Jefferson. Al Jefferson, if you're watching this, please write me back, please. All right, because if I have to learn anything, it's that you have to tune out the noise. Only thing that matter is what happened between the lines. Do the work, listen to the culture, and the result will take care of themselves. Because at the end of the day, it's not about the money, the nice hotel, the private jets. Remember that and you will be fine, okay? With all the players I mentioned still available by the fifth pick, Khan selected Ricky Rubio. Wait, Ricky Rubio? Uh, okay, well in his defense, everybody was interested in Rubio at the time. He was coming off an amazing international season, coupled with the team's need of a point guard, making it a worth gamble that just looks bad in hindsight. But hey, they have the very next pick to try again. Alright, let's try this again. With all the players I mentioned still available by the sixth pick, who will David Kahn select to win the hearts of the Timberwolves fans, to save the franchise from its lottery status, to prove they can win without Kevin Garnett? David Kahn picks point cards back to back in the 09 draft with top six picks. Kahn claims later that he thought it would be many years before Rubio would be able to join the team, which in fairness was partially true because of international contracts. But not only does it make it even more puzzling to use the fifth pick on him, but it becomes hilarious when you see that Flynn only played two NBA seasons while that other point guard drafted one pick after him.
did a little more than that. In 2018, Curry actually said that he thought Khan didn't select him because he was afraid that Curry would hate Minnesota's cold weather, since it would stop him from golfing, apparently. Okay, not a good first two picks for David, but hey, he still has two more first-round picks, where he selects Ty Lawson, another point guard, who he trades away for another first-round pick, and Wayne Ellington. Okay, well, it's time for free agency. Let's see what he does. But first, we get some weird trades that didn't really do anything in the grand scheme of things. As we go on, you'll definitely see a pattern with these weird trades. Last thing they did is they filled out their roster, and their biggest signing is another point guard with a four-year deal. Uh, okay, I, I guess one of these guys has to work out, right? All right, new coach, new prospects, and Minnesota begins its... 15 and 67 season with just one mid-season trade for Darko Milicic. Now, if you don't know Darko, his claim to fame is that he was picked second in the 2003 draft ahead of some other pretty good players. But tanking can be really good, right? They were so close to getting that star last draft that maybe they'll get lucky. After another pointless trade, we go to the draft. The Timberwolves have the fourth pick what say you, Mr. Khan? Oh, are you sure you wouldn't rather have any of, um, these guys? Well, the draft goes on, and Khan trades away his other first round for Martel Webster, who spent one season with the Timberwolves, averaging seven points per game, and noped out of there. Probably his smartest move in his entire career. Okay, not a great start, but there's still free agency. July 1st, deals can start to be made, and well, look at this. Khan has already made a multi-year deal with... Darko Milicic, and referred to him as Mana from Heaven. Okay, and, well, there's another trade for Michael Beasley. Uh, sure, kind of doesn't really move the needle. Well, if that's the last of that, now he really needs to get some pieces to complement all-star 25-year-old Al Jefferson, who is undoubtedly their best player and probably untouchable. Okay, okay, okay. So you've traded away a really good player, the centerpiece of the Kevin Garnett trade a couple years ago. And not gotten much back, but I guess you can excuse it when you just sign Mana from Heaven. Alright, they sign Luke Rittenhauer, another point guard. Um, they trade away Ramon Sessions, and also a pick. Okay, well, let's see what they get. They get Delonte West and Sebastian Tolfair. Two more guards. So now we have a team with no identity, too many new players, a cluttered position with all their young prospects, and also a member of the Russian Mafia somehow? Alright, first the good. Kevin Love is blossoming into a really good player. He actually has a 31.31 rebound game, which is the first of its kind in 28 years. Second, Michael Beasley accidentally touched Anthony Tolliver's knee. Third, they improved their win total. Two 17 and 65, which is worst in the league. Yay. And before I could even get to the bad, David Kahn just hops in to Carmelo Anthony's blockbuster trade, taking on bad contracts for the Knicks so they can match salary, which is not unheard of. But what is really weird is that he didn't even get a first round pick as compensation, just kind of taking on bad contracts for the sake of taking on bad contracts. Well, Another 17-win season, last place finish for the Wolves, essentially having moved nowhere in the last three seasons, despite having nowhere to go but up. But they get two awesome breaks. Ricky Rubio is finally coming over to play, and his two-year deal is followed by the Timberwolves snagging the second pick in the NBA draft. Alright, round three. With the second pick, here are some of the players who the Timberwolves could pair with all-star Kevin Love. Well, even though you want a star for the second pick, there are also a ton of good role players who could be available as well. Well, the Minnesota Timberwolves, with the second overall pick, got none of these. They got Derek Williams, who played five seasons before being out of the league for good. They complete another lateral trade, miss on another first-round pick, who they actually trade away after, along with the famous one pick before Stephen Curry, Johnny Flynn, for just another draft pick. Their last draft move is trading away a late pick for cash. Pretty common among smaller teams, but that player, Boyan Bogdanovich, is actually still in the league and productive, outlasting the second pick in that entire draft, 
which is insane to think about. Somehow, Khan squeezes in another random trade before free agency, signs two point guards, and actually does one last trade before the 2012 lockout season, which shortened the amount of time GMs had to make trades. Yet Khan somehow makes five trades in that short of a period. Oh, he also fires coach Kurt Rambis and hires a pretty good coach Rick Adelman, famous for leading the early 2000s Kings in the totally not rigged don't ask about a playoff series against the Kobe Shaq Lakers. All right, let's move on. All right, new coach first the good. They extend Kevin Love, who is playing incredible in his new role. They improve to 26 wins. Um... Uh, well, they don't finish last. Alright, that season was a wash. Derek Williams ends his inaugural season averaging 9 points on a very poor 41% from the field. Alright, let's see if they can continue their success next season with a strong offseason. Okay, last one of these, so let's go quickly. Minnesota did not have their first round pick, which could have theoretically been future MVP and champion Giannis Antetokounmpo, but I said quickly. Okay, so they give up a pick for an average player. Amnesty Mr. Mana from Heaven, meaning they told him, you are so bad, we are going to pay you not to play. Do a meaningless trade, trade another okay player for another okay player, sign another point guard, and sign players who could have helped basically four years ago to very steep contracts. Oh, and they give up on Wesley Johnson for three second round picks, which, okay, hey, at least they knew before they overpaid, wait, they gave up another first round pick along with him. Why? Now, in fairness, that pick, because of the protections put on it, never conveyed to the other team. But nevertheless, it's a crazy risky move just to get off an expiring rookie contract. With the last few end of the bench signings, David Kahn's last season as GM of the Denver Wolves ends with Kevin Love sustaining a major injury after playing only 18 games, another 12th place finish, and essentially no progress in four years. In fact, with the loss of Al Jefferson and Picks, you could argue they actually got worse over those four years. Khan is now president of the French basketball team Paris Basketball, and likely won't see another NBA job for the immediate future. Here are the great results of Khan's management. 